Proverbs 12, 8. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. What good men think of you is very important. In fact, their thoughts of you are your testimony as to godliness or selfishness. Proverbs 3, verse 3 and 4 says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Act a fool and they will despise you. Plus, there's no way to hide your folly. Ecclesiastes 10.3 Yea, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth him. And he saith to every one that he is a fool. You know, we are to take special note of a man's wisdom or his folly. In Psalm chapter 37, verse 37, says, Mark the perfect man. And behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. To the Romans, chapter 16 and verse 17, the Bible says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Philippians 3.17 says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Consider for a moment the word perverse in this uh, proverb. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he is of a perverse heart shall be despised. What is a perverse heart? Well, I believe we could say it's the motives in a man that fears or loves God. He has no desire or regard for godliness or holiness. Proud and selfish thinking causes him to choose contrary, unreasonable, and wrong courses of action. He is ignorant of wisdom. He's obstinate and foolish and impulsive and just downright irritating, plus being offensive. He's very obnoxious to good men. I have the question, though, can you make a wise judgment of your own foolishness or, or wisdom? Are you able to notice that men gravitate toward you or that they avoid you take heart god has given us a book of wisdom from which we can learn and apply it think about two men nabal and david nabal was churlish and evil even his name meant fool his noble wife used to explain his perverse conduct and she called him a man of belial in other words son of one that's no good his own servants said it was impossible to even talk to him. He was despised by everyone who knew him. And though Abigail stopped David from killing him, God did it himself. David was far better than Nabal. Though that perverse man despised him, the rest of the nation set David's name up on high. For he behaved himself more wisely than anyone else in King Saul's government. Even Jonathan, Saul's son, greatly loved David. Though crown prince of Israel, he coveted with David to be at his right hand. When the Jews sent officers to arrest Jesus, they returned without him. And they said, never spake man like this man. Even his enemies commended him for his wisdom. But friend, what's most important is what does God think of us? Will we hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or will we hear the words, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity? What's he think of us? I believe it would be very important in our lives. We need to inspect our life and see how are we effective in the lives of others. And if we're not, Quit making excuses, it's their fault. And look inwardly and allow God to bring some wisdom and some change to our lives. I trust this will be a great day for you.